Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to go through the common linked list operation called append. Now, append is also known as insert at end. So in a previous video, we implemented insert at front, which was constant time complexity, no matter how many nodes are in the list, in order to insert at the beginning of the list, we simply have to update the head pointer. Now, append node, on the other hand, if our linked list implementation only has a head pointer, then this is actually a linear time complexity algorithm because we have to walk through every node in the list in order to reach the last node in the list to insert the new node as its next pointer. Now, we can actually improve this if our linked list implementation stores a tail pointer in addition to a head pointer. There's not a lot of overhead with adding a tail pointer, just that we have to keep it up to date so that it always points to the last node in the list. So that would be a little improvement to this algorithm. But as is, our implementation is going to be a big O of N uh, linear time complexity algorithm. So let's go ahead and do a trace of append node, and then we will code it up. So let's work with the same list we've been working with so far, which has been a three node list. It's got three, five, and 12 in it. So we're gonna insert a new node in the list. Let's do this with say, dark green. The new node we're gonna insert in the list, let's say keeping this in sorted order, is going to store 15. Now, initially this new node has a next pointer of null, okay? Since we're gonna be inserting this at the end of the list, not at the beginning of the list, then what we wanna do is make it so that node that stores 12, its next pointer points to our new node, and our new node's next pointer continues to point to null, marking the end of the list. So that's the goal. Let's see how we need to do it. Well, very similar to our display list, we're gonna need another pointer, and I'll call it cur pointer, that is going to be initialized to head and is going to walk through each node in our list. For our display list implementation, our cur pointer stopped when it had reached null. If we reach null though with our cur pointer, we've gone one too far because we don't have links that go backwards and point to the previous node. We can do that though, that's called a doubly linked list, but we're gonna finish out all the common linked list operations for singly linked lists first. So we actually wanna stop before we reach null. So our stopping condition is going to be while cur pointer next not equal to null. That way we stop here and then we can use cur pointer and it's next in order to update the list. Okay, so let's see how this is going to work. So cur pointer is initialized to head, okay? What if head is null? Okay, we should probably have a check for this before we try to access, oops, before we try to access by the referencing cur pointer and get it next. Okay, so I'm gonna make a little note here, check, for cur pointer not equal to null. Okay, that's one of our cases. So the first one is empty list, then head points to the new node. Very similar to our insert at front. But case number two, non-empty list. So we need to traverse until we reach the last node. Okay, that's really important that we need to stop once we reach the last node. 
All right. So I'm gonna get rid of this note here since we've got our case for it now. All right, let's walk through with our Kerr pointer. All right, so Kerr pointer not equal to null, true. Kerr pointers next not equal to null, nope. This guy right here is in the green. It is pointing to the node with value five. So what do we do? We're going to update Kerr pointer so that it points to the node with five in it. We're going to test to see, okay, is Kerr pointers next not equal to null? That's true. Kerr pointers next is this link right here, and it definitely doesn't point to null. So we're going to update Kerr pointer to point to the next node, which is 12. Then we're going to ask, part of our Boolean condition, is Kerr pointers next not equal to null? And that is false. Kerr pointers next is this guy right here, and it does equal null. So that means we need to break out of this loop, and Kerr pointer is now pointing to our last element in the list. So what do we need to do? We need to update this yellow link right here so that our Kerr pointer, which is node 12, next doesn't point to null. It instead points to our new node. So what we're going to do is we're going to say Kerr pointers next is assigned new node. So what that does is remove next pointing to null, next now points to our new node, and our new node's next pointer already points to null because that's how we're going to initialize new nodes, and therefore we're done. That's it. Not too bad. All right, let's code up a append node. We are going to need an integer argument that is going to be the new value to insert into the list. Okay, I've called it a pen. All right, so this member function is really kind of a hybrid of our insert at front and our display list. We're going to need to create a new node, just like we did here, and check our two cases. So I'm gonna actually just copy this and paste it. But if our list is not empty, we're gonna have to traverse the list in a similar fashion as we did for display list. All right, so let's trace through what we have so far. We're gonna make a new node, setting the new node's value, to our parameter value and set its next pointer to null. Perfect. Our two cases, if our head is null, then head is simply going to point to our new node. No problems there. Otherwise, we're going to need to traverse the list. And the key is we're going to need to stop at the last node. Stop at the last node. So we're going to actually do something very similar to what we did up here with our display list. So we're going to need to have a cur node pointer again. Initialize it to head. We know that head isn't null because we're in this else block. Right, the Boolean condition on the associated if is head equal to null. So the only way to get here is head is not equal to null. Okay, so we've already done our test to make sure that that's the case. Now our while loop is while cur node next is not equal to null. Okay, once cur node's next is equal to null, we know we're at the last node in the list. So there's nothing really to do here except advance cur node. So this is the same as what we were doing in our display list. Now outside of this while loop, we know that cur node is now pointing to the last node in the list. 
So per node, its next pointer points to what? It points to our new node. That's it. All right, let's try it out. In main, okay, we'll display the list. Then we're going to do list.append, and we're going to append 15. Then we'll display the list again, and we should see 15 at the end of the list, just like it was in our trace that we drew up. I really should have just called this append, not append node. It's okay, I'll try to remember. All right, and there it is, 15. Let's try it again, just for fun. Let's say I want to append 100. And there it is, you can see it's growing now at the end, whereas with insert at front, it grows at the beginning. All right, awesome. We have now implemented three common linked list operations. Head over to our header file so you can see them. We've got insert at front, we've got insert at end, AKA append node, and we've got a display list. Okay, so the operations that we have left include various forms of removing a node, AKA deleting a node, right? So we should be able to delete at front, delete at end. Also, what if we don't need to, you know, necessarily only add or remove at the beginning or add or remove at the end? What if we need to be able to add or remove from the middle of the list? So that would be inserting an order and then a generic delete where we remove a node that matches our first integer value we're looking for, which is kind of like a search function. And then we mustn't forget about this destructor right here. This is really important. If you look, we've got a few calls uh, using the new keyword to allocate memory dynamically on the heap. So we need to be wary of if our head is not null when this destructor executes, we've got to free those nodes. So there's still a lot left to do, but this is a really great start because now we have insight into how our list looks and we can insert at the beginning and at the end. Thank you for watching.